Good morning, dear participants. Welcome to Unit 2 of the second module. You have me, Madhumita, once again with you. Today, we are going to discuss a topic very important for our academic life and for our career, group discussions. Group discussions, or GDs, as they are called in short, occur in many different formats from very informal ones between friends to highly structured and challenging discussions which include job or higher education contexts or they can happen at a workplace. When some people, any number from 4 to 10, come together and discuss a topic of interest to generate ideas, to reach a decision, or to solve a problem, it can be called a group discussion. Group discussion is a very useful speaking activity because it offers lengthy speaking, listening, and the ability of connecting with each other. Therefore, to improve our skill for group discussion is useful not just for communicative purposes but also for personality development. Let us think of the learning outcomes of this module. Once you complete it, you will understand the format of group discussion, know the do's and don'ts of GDs, participate in them thoughtfully, work on developing speaking ability of an advanced nature. You can look at worksheet 2 for a task where you have to put down your ideas about a group discussion in points. As I said earlier, in a formal context, often group discussions are a part of job selection process or can be a routine one in an office for any other reason that I mentioned. In both these situations, a member in the group discussion team should focus on two aspects about making an individual impact as well as working as a team player. With colleagues, there is a sense of familiarity, so one can predict responses and moods but a discussion with a group of strangers, which is for a selection process in an academic course or a job, requires slightly different strategy. We will focus more on this type here, though the ideas generated will be useful for any format of group discussions. For different types of group discussions, please look at worksheet Two. Learn 2.2. Please remember that for a group discussion, you have to formulate your ideas, speak and simultaneously listen very carefully to others. Active listening is essential to be able to connect with others and respond to them in a thoughtful manner. You have to keep in mind that you are not here to give a speech. So linking your ideas with others is going to be crucial. Therefore, listening, as I have been saying, is a very important aspect. When you listen carefully, it is easy to connect with a member and take a position in the group. Keep making mental notes of the important points. In case you have any doubts about the point being made, you can ask for a clarification. Asking a question is better than trying to guess or to jump to conclusion. And not to forget, while listening, maintain an eye contact with the speaker. Though every now and then, you can also look at the others for their reactions. Your nonverbal expressions, for example, nodding, smiling, 
etc. act as markers of your involvement. Remember the importance of back-channeling that Shema, my colleague, spoke of in Unit 1. It will be relevant to follow it here too. Now, let us watch a video of a group discussion and analyze it to understand its quality. Please watch the video carefully. So guys, uh, today we are going to discuss this very interesting topic of uh, situation of traffic in Hyderabad. You know, it's bad, really bad. Like, it took me three hours to reach here from Kukatpalli. And not just that, it, it gives me back pain every day I travel on road. So guys, uh, today we are going to discuss about this topic, uh, situation of traffic in Hyderabad and you know how bad it is. Let me give, me an example, give you an example, like it took me three hours to reach this place from Kukatpal. It's not just about the duration, I guess, it's also about the quality of roads. Man, it takes, it just gives me back pain every day. Uh, and also it, it doesn't stop there also, you just look at the pollution all over like I, I always have these breathing wait, issues wait wait wait, 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 you know I also have something to say about this you know what happened when I went to Chennai the other day it was so bad I had to wait in the traffic for hours and hours I couldn't even cross the road without help and people don't follow the traffic rules even when the uh, signal is red people just keep driving they don't respect pedestrians they don't think about wait, anybody wait, wait, else wait, wait, no, no no you no, know no. what happened the Chennai monsoon happened yes. and there was floods and everything See, was See, you are bringing in all irrelevant information to the conversation. So, if so this is saying, irrelevant, no, no. what are your points? I have points to say. As my friend was saying that when he was trying to travel from uh, Kukarpalli to Sikindrabad, it took him three hours of time. But there are also a few solutions for that. The government has built metros which you can use for traveling within a shorter period of time. The metro from Kukatpalli to Sikindrabad will only take you on 40 minutes of time. So there are few solutions. Wait, wait, and wait. No. Uh, please, please have, give me I have to have a point to say. What? Have you seen our outer ring roads in Hyderabad? They are so yes. good. They are so wide and they are so good. And we have even inner ring roads where uh, it can be inter what, how, how does it matter like uh, outer ring roads and inner ring roads? Why are, no, let's meet up. Why are you bringing that outer ring road and inner ring road to the conversation? We are see, talking about Hyderabad see, city and city based yeah. roads. Those are different from what you are talking about. But what about the pollution guys? I mean there is a lot of pollution over here. Yeah, that's why so you nobody is talking about that. Road, there yeah. is car pulling. You can that's also use... That's what I was also telling. No, in Chennai this keeps happening all the time. But we are not talking about Chennai, Hyderabad. Why are you bringing in your own city? You don't know. In Hyderabad, government is planning to implement many schemes and things. And they are the just looting us by all the taxes? No. But, but taxes are being used for, uh, you know, building the metros, MMTS and other roads. There are many flyovers that are coming into the city. But metros are different from the road quality, right? You should also ensure to have Even a proper quality of roads. construction road. is making the traffic get blocked every day. It takes years to build a flyover. Until then, there is no way for us to go from one place to another. But they are building, na? See, they are long? 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 Yeah, yes. planning to uh, develop roads. So, we have to give some chance to government. But there must be it. some prevention to control this pollution and all right nobody talks about that why why no, why nobody talks about that it's a global issue now it's okay it's a global issue might be but we have to give some space to government to build infrastructure it takes some time isn't the responsibility of the government to control pollution and all we should just excuse them for all this see you can't just blame government for everything it might be a government initiative but it should be every individual's responsibility to stop the pollution in every way possible Wait, and even the government takes few rules, rules. It's not that they can go around following every See, single person. I follow traffic rules. Do you follow traffic rules? Well, we all try, but then they don't let us. You are only bringing in minority of people who don't follow traffic rules and you are blaming yeah. everyone else. Yeah. And you were talking no, about the metro. Can, I, can everybody afford metro? What do you See, think? See, they are planning to implement some cost effective uh, manner. There are also to... metro passes available like bus pass. Do you know the metro is also giving subsidies when you book ticket from phone? But it is so day? expensive. Even then, after, the, after all the subsidies, it's still expensive. It is not it's expensive as driving a car, right? If you are able to pay for a diesel and petrol for your car, you can very well travel in metro. Yeah, that's also a point. But yeah, no. uh, still, if the government is implementing some things, we have to have some patience so that we have good infrastructure to, uh, to use. But my things. patience is being taken over by my back pain. What do I do? Then don't drive a car, travel by metro, stand in the metro. 
There are also buses that no. you can use. I can't afford a car, See, dude. You have to stop this beating around the bush. You can uh, buy a bicycle, uh, travel by road. It will be How think can you go by a bicycle? Maybe. No, do you think it is possible to drive a bicycle in Hyderabad traffic? Yeah, the that, that, that is the entire speed point speed. of the dis- dis- discussion, right? I mean, you don't need to do this. Yeah, we are discussing. Wait for your time. <laughs> they just don't respect each other's time on the road. They don't look at the other person and think that that person also belongs on do the road. Do you know what is the traffic uh, and what is the population in Hyderabad? No. So do you know? But uh, yes, uh, do you have to 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 say when you say it's a huge yeah, population, can't we just follow the Delhi model of uh, traffic control? What like is the Delhi the model? Delhi, Delhi is a very different city than Hyderabad. Why is Hyderabad is still looking for other cities? So, but it, it, it's as populous, almost as populous as Delhi. So we, I don't. I think we can implement it here also. I think Hyderabad can follow many other better options than the Delhi model. People have like been what? very dissatisfied like with what? the Delhi model in the past. Like what? I mean, what do you mean? Okay, okay. Let's come to the discussion. I think we have discussed. Hey. Lot of points. So let me conclude. So this is what we got uh, through the uh, conversations. I think this group discussion was very good. Thank you. Thank you. Go to worksheet two, tasks two point three, and do the two tasks given. You need to imagine that you are a member of this group discussion. Now, what will be your position? in relation to the traffic in a city though the topic here mentions hyderabad you can bring in the context of your own city which will be quite the same i'm sure at least in relation to the queues first write down some points and then speak it out also try to have a difference of opinion with any one of the candidates how will you frame it think about it you can also record yourself and listen to it and make changes to improve later now let us analyze this group discussion together what did you think of it how about the individual members and their approach to the topic do you remember after the first person spoke about the long traffic duration causing back ache for him the second person started speaking about the problem of the pedestrians in chennai was it suitable as the members of the group didn't even introduce themselves we are calling them as numbers you can also do the same and number them in the order in which they spoke for jotting down your points they also did not set any protocol for themselves to get the best results so if we analyze this group discussion we must accept that everything went wrong with it the topic traffic problems in hyderabad city just didn't come across well let us list out some issues together there was no introduction and no ground rules were laid long opening comments were made without reference to each other we saw participants interrupting each other several times and also speaking simultaneously meaning when one was speaking the other would start speaking too they were also repeating themselves there was lack of formal agreement or disagreement the team members had no sense of individual roles they completely denied opportunity to one colleague the discussion had no proper summing up or closure so as you are thinking about this unorganized gd please go to worksheet 2 learn 2.4 and follow the website given there to learn more about efficient group discussions 
To think about this completely chaotic group discussion a little bit more, did you notice that people were speaking together, interrupting each other? Did anyone use expressions like, could I bring in a different example here? Sorry to interrupt, but I partially agree. I would like to add here that I am afraid I have a different point of view. Allow me to take us back to the first point. This will tell us that there are some important skills that will help you acquire high level of competence for group discussion. For example, the ability to analyze, to persuade, to support, to control emotions, to speak with clarity by connecting with other members in the group. Go to worksheet 2, learn 2.5 and look at the learning item to read on these sub skills in detail and to check out different ways of agreeing, disagreeing, asking for more explanations, getting the focus back onto the topic, etc. Go to worksheet 2, learn 2.6 and check out the two links given there to learn suitable expressions for group discussions. Now let us go to watch the second group discussion. Good morning friends, I am Venkat. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hello everyone. So let me start speaking about the topic for the day. The topic is uh, child labor in India and ways to eradicate it. So it is really sad to see that there are many child labors in our country. That clearly means that there are many poor people and they do not go to school. So this is also very sad to see. The parents put these children into these menial jobs to get some extra income. So the government should put very strict restrictions on it. And even the government should punish the parents if they are sending their children for child labor. There are thousands of children engaged in child labor in India who need to be rescued. Thank you Venkat, that was a really good start. But uh, friends, before we continue, I think we need to set some ground rules. We have around 10 minutes for this discussion. So first, let's uh, take one minute each to present our initial thoughts. And after that, we can go around and discuss again. And finally, we can conclude. This way, each of us will have a chance to speak. What do you all think? Yeah, well, that sounds like a good idea. And guys, my name is Peter. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Uh, I'm Manasi. Allow me to come in here then. I think uh, child labor is a big problem for us. Clearly, this creation of these children indicates a violation to the right to education, right to childhood and the right to be equal citizens in this country. And I think poverty is one of the basic reasons for this and we must work hard on poverty to bring a change on this. Thank you. I completely agree uh, that poverty is one of the main reasons. But I also think we need to talk about the right to education. And childhood is such an important time. During this tender age, children should be in school. They shouldn't be working. And did you know that in India, out of 10 workers, every single uh, 10 workers is one who is a child? That is a really sad fact. In 2010, we had the Right to Education Act, which was put forward by the government that says that every child below the age of 14 should be in school. So for a child below that age to be working is illegal, but it is not being properly enforced. And we need to find ways so that this can be enforced in all the neighborhoods. And there are so many neighborhoods where, where there are no elementary schools. We can't expect children to travel long distances uh, in order to get education, right? Well, very true, but let me begin my point by aligning myself to Venkat's stance that child labor is definitely a curse on any civilized society. But again, I would like to uh, just align with Harmeet's point here that every society or rather Indian society needs a proper good free schooling system which is available to all the poor children. Uh, what this does is it attracts these children to education. Uh, point number one. Point number two, it also absorbs these parents of uh, these blames that we put on them. Uh, 
because children will be barred from uh, getting into this menial labor. But uh, Harvit, uh, don't you think we should also look into the fact that uh, this Child Labor Act, these are only, uh, or rather Right to Education Act, is only confined to the age between uh, 6 to 14? And also, just look at this uh, fact also that the laws are not clear about the distinction between hazardous and non-hazardous works. What do you think? Yeah, you're completely right. I think there should be an extension to the age for uh, compulsory education in India beyond 14. And we definitely need to make a clear distinction between what job is considered hazardous and what job is not. Zia, what do you say? Mm. I agree with most of the points raised by the members of the group. The government has decided to ban the employment of children below the age of 14 as domestic help and in dawas, tea shops, restaurants, hotels and resorts. This is really a good move. Yes, friends, but I uh, still think that parents have to be responsible for uh, the child labor. Otherwise, the government will not be able to do anything. Parents are uh, trying to send their children to extra jobs because they are getting some extra income. The government should monitor such situations. Government should also increase the public messages and announce that parents whose children are into child labor will be severely punished. I'm sorry Venkat, but I think uh, my views on this topic are a little different. I think that rather than put the entire blame on the parents, we as a society and also the government need to share some of this responsibility. Do you remember that really good slogan, each one teach one? Why are we not able to implement that? And if you think about it, most of the children go to jobs for very small sums of money. This is because in our country, there is a big gap between the rich and the poor and this gap keeps growing. And the poor don't even have basic needs in their life. So we can't blame them for uh, wanting to have these basic needs met. You're right, Hamid. Uh, but my opinion also is that child labor and begging uh, also happen because people, particularly poor, are lazy and be educated start blaming the government. What can the state do for such a big population? In the list of causes for child labor, I want to add big population and laziness along with poverty. The desire to work hard, I think, can solve many issues. Oh, wait, uh, I'm not digressing from the topic. Let's just push this begging part out of our discussion. And uh, I would like to bring in some uh, facts and figures to our table of discussion. So, uh, first of all, uh, these ho there are some hotspot employment sites for this child labor. Like uh, uh, the first one would be the construction sites. Uh, it also happens in agriculture, fisheries, all kinds of mining, right? And uh, I think the worst forms of child labor would be uh, prostitution, child trafficking, and also wanted labor which is quite prevalent and I would also uh, want to draw your attention to the fact that in the last year 2021 alone uh, the child line 1098 has rescued as much as 35,000 children out of this child labor. What do you guys think of this? Yeah, I don't think all food people are lazy and don't think of their children's future. The problem is that they don't have any solution. I think the government should implement developing skills during education. Yeah, Zia, I think that is a very good point. Children, once they reach the age of 14, they can take up, uh, you know, vocational jobs of their own choice, like uh, carpentry, mechanical jobs, uh, painting of houses, etc. This will also help us in reducing the poverty in a major way. But I think the problem will be if we start asking the government for support again. I think we are always waiting for others to help us. In my opinion, what a responsible government should do, it should do. The Child Labour Prohibition Act of 1986 bars all the children from getting employed into hazardous works of any manner. And let me also bring in uh, Zia's uh, point that there should be wholesome education where the children get vocational mm -hmm. training and skill development also like candle making, carpentry and also many other artistic works. Not just that, uh, it, it should not be restricted to just having skill development. There should be proper monitoring uh, to avoid any kind of uh, stealthy creeping in of this child labor into these remote areas. It's, it should not stop there also. There should be a proper rehabilitation to the children already employed in this bonded labor. Right? Yeah, the, there are yes. times when uh, the child labor can stealthily come back in places where... Yeah, yeah, there should be a proper monitoring also in this case. Uh, this is the responsibility of the government also that 
uh, these things child labor do not creep into such uh, remote areas thank you right. peter uh, i think that you have slowly started formulating the conclusion and we are also coming to the end of our time so i think we all agree that childhood child labor is a huge social and ethical problem and it needs to be stopped immediately this can happen effectively only if the government as well as other groups uh, and individuals like us come together and work towards eradication of it uh, and definitely the government has to take a lead it has to come up with a mechanism uh, in which it can work towards getting these children who have been uh, bonded laborers for so many years enrolled into schools give them vocational training uh, train them to have special skills in their life we should also uh, try to educate uh, and conduct social awareness campaigns so that the general public also know about this and through this skill building and educational opportunities i think we can slowly reduce child labor and bring it to an end thank you all for this really good discussion Thank you. Thank you. Please note the differences between the first and this one. So you must have noticed these points. All members of the group had a chance to speak and express themselves. The discussion was not dominated by one person, though we saw Harmeet emerging as the leader of the group. There were disagreements, but there was no rudeness or snubbing of each other. Due to conducive atmosphere, a variety of points of view were put forward and discussed. Even a shy and quiet member like Zia was pulled into the discussion and we saw Peter and Harmeet consciously including him in the process. So this group discussion brought numerous benefits as there was encouragement and motivation for the participants to come up with ideas and express an opinion. Did you notice it had much better opening, build up and conclusion. It created a friendly atmosphere and inculcated a positive sense among peers and help them overcome their inhibitions. Finally, it led to all of them coming to agree with each other and build a consensus. Now, please go to worksheet 2, learn 2.7 and check out the advantages of group discussions for language learning and personality development. Now we are going to think of the kind of roles the candidates took. We saw Harmeet emerging as the group leader. Then can you think of the roles that Zia, Peter, Mansi and Venkat assumed? If you were participating based on your thoughts on the topic, what role would you play? How much would you agree or disagree with individual members? To think about roles, go to worksheet 2, learn 2.8 and in the learning activity section, check out the roles that usually group members take. As an activity, could you try and prepare yourself for any two roles? See what is the information and approach that is required for you to be in two different positions. Try to record yourself individually first and then try to practice sessions with your friends. So friends, let me sum up now. You would have seen that there are some important aspects of group discussions defining, elaborating the topic, setting a process, ensuring participation of all candidates, enabling the discussion to cover as many aspects as possible. There is no doubt that an effective discussion depends on a leader or facilitator 
who can steer it through with clear instructions and by being assertive, but not by being aggressive or dominating. There are others who come up with different opinions and in the process there can be agreement and disagreements. But all members should be included and should have a say. A collaborative style works best for all group activities, including group discussions.